The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse In the shadowed corridors of biblical prophecy, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse stand as an indicator of the world's end, each a chilling manifestation of humanity's greatest fears. The Four Horsemen first appear in the Book of Revelation. These mysterious characters ride through the Bible stories, bringing messages people have discussed for hundreds of years. John, one of Jesus' followers, had to live alone on the island of Patmos. There, he had an amazing vision. The emergence of the four horse riders of the apocalypse amplifies human weakness, defeat leading to war, war breeding famine, and ultimately, all paths converging at death. Now, who are these horsemen of the apocalypse, and what do they symbolize when it comes to the end of the world? The Background Story Before the four horsemen of the apocalypse emerged, significant events and visions in the book of Revelation set the stage for their appearance. The book of Revelation is a complex and symbolic work, often interpreted as a prophecy about the end times. The book of Revelation starts with John of Patmos, the author, receiving a vision from God. In this vision, John is called to witness and record the events unfolding. John is then instructed to write letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor, addressing their spiritual condition and urging repentance and faithfulness. John's vision then shifts to heaven where he sees God's throne surrounded by 24 other thrones with elders and four living creatures. This scene is a depiction of divine majesty and worship of God. In God's right hand, John sees a scroll sealed with seven seals. The seven seals are part of God's end-of-the-world judgments. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 17 details the seals. The action begins in chapter 5 of Revelation, with a search for someone in heaven and on earth, someone worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. The scroll's significance becomes clear in light of events. On it must be written the program that will bring the age of earthly history in which we live to an end. The seven seals in heaven, according to John's vision, hold a scroll and as each seal is broken, a new judgment is unleashed on the world. The trumpet judgments and the bowl or vial judgments come after the seal judgments. The hunt for someone worthy to open the celestial scroll in Revelation chapter 5 is the prelude to the opening of the seven seals in John's vision. John writes, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides, and sealed with seven seals. This scroll includes God's judgments. No one was judged worthy of breaching the seals and unlocking the scroll, which saddens John. If the scroll could not be opened, evil would not be judged and continue to plague the earth. While John is sobbing over the unopened scroll and its seven intact seals, he receives excellent news. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. This is a representation of Jesus Christ, the slain lamb who was also the Lion of Judgment. As Jesus takes the scroll to open the seals and deliver judgment on the unbelieving world, the beings in heaven glorify him with a new song. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. 
the Lamb begins to open the seals in the midst of the worship due to him. The scroll can be enrolled a little further with each seal opened, exposing the judgments God has in store for the tribulation time, little by bit. The scroll is significant as it contains God's plan for the end times. The scroll in question is believed to be a significant record of the history and destiny of both mankind and creation. According to the teachings, only Jesus, referred to as the Lamb, has the rightful authority to loosen the seals and reveal the details contained within. This scroll holds the secrets of the ultimate culmination of history. Its contents have the power to change the course of humanity and are therefore treated with the utmost reverence and respect. The events we witness presently are not the ultimate conclusion of human history but rather a precursor or groundwork for what is yet to come. The final fulfillment of history will be depicted in the book of Revelation chapter 19. The act of opening the seals in the biblical context is not just a mere declaration of what God intends to do, but rather it represents a clear manifestation of the purpose that has already been accomplished. It is important to note that whenever a seal is opened, the sentence that was sealed within it appears to be executed right away. This implies that the opening of the seals is not just an announcement of future events, but is a demonstration of the fulfillment of the divine plan. Who are the four horsemen? The first horseman. The first horseman of the apocalypse is a figure that symbolizes conquest, meaning going forth conquering and to conquer. This horseman is introduced when the Lamb opens the first of the seven seals on a scroll in heaven, in Revelation chapter 6. This passage presents the notorious four horsemen of the apocalypse as fierce images of terrifying judgment. A little historical consideration will help us understand how these images would have threatened the worldly security of a first century audience, thereby inviting us to sense the same dread these images would have originally evoked. The seals cover the same period covered by the trumpets and bowls. The seals cover the first of three sets of judgments in the end of the age. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 2 then I saw as the Lamb, Christ, broke one of the seven seals of the scrolls initiating the judgments. And I heard one of the four living creatures call out, as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked and behold, a white horse of victory, whose rider carried a bow, and a crown of victory was given to him, and he rode forth conquering and to conquer. We read, And I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. Each seal is associated with a living creature. Zoa, one of the cherubim of Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10, who called out come, or could be translated go forth to each horseman. Ezekiel gives us an insight to the four creatures when he witnesses the throne room of God. There is no indication that these beings are figurative in the texts that describe them. Rather, they are presented as real, actual beings. The four living creatures, literally beings, are a special exalted order of angelic beings or cherubim. This is made abundantly clear by the proximity of these individuals to the throne of God. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 12 through 20 suggests they are constantly moving around the throne. The purpose of the four living creatures also has to do with declaring the holiness of God and leading in worship and adoration of God. The living creatures say, Behold a white horse. The first horseman rides a white horse, often symbolizing victory purity, and righteousness. 
This choice of color may imply that the horseman is a conqueror who appears to be righteous or victorious. The rider holds a bow and is given a crown, indicating his status as a conqueror. The bow suggests a readiness for battle or conflict, while the crown signifies authority and success. The first horseman is often interpreted in various ways. Some see him as symbolizing Christ or the spread of the gospel, considering the positive connotations of the white horse. Others view him as representing false prophets or leaders who deceive people under the guise of righteousness. Yet another perspective is that he symbolizes war and conquest more generally. With his white horse, bow, and crown, the first horseman sets the stage for unfolding the events in the book of Revelation, leading to further revelations and judgments. His appearance is a vital part of the prophecy about the end times, which suggests the beginning of a period marked by victory or domination, and sets the tone for the unfolding events in the prophecy. The description of this horseman suggests that deceptive appearances of peace or righteousness might characterize the initial phase of the end times. Some people believe that the rider on the white horse in Revelation is Jesus, especially if they are more influenced by cowboy movies than the Bible. In the biblical context, the bull was often used as a metaphor for conquest, just like the sword was used to signify war. However, it is noteworthy that the image of the bow is more frequently associated with specific peoples who were renowned for their archery skills. The biblical prophets employed this metaphor to convey the idea of successful conquests and the subjugation of enemies. The use of the bow as a metaphor in the Bible highlights the significance of the weapon in ancient warfare. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 3 all your leaders have fled together with your king and have been captured without the bow which they had thrown away. All of you who were found were taken captive together, though they had fled far away. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 14 Set yourselves in battle formation against Babylon on every side, all you archers. Shoot at her, do not spare the arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. We read, He went to conquering and to conquer. That a final satanic dictator will emerge to rule over humankind. According to this belief, this figure will be more terrible than all previous dictators combined. He will present himself as a false messiah and lead humanity in organized rebellion against God much like Nimrod, the first tyrant in human history. This figure is often referred to as the Antichrist, and his reign is seen as a time of great suffering and turmoil for humanity. The Antichrist is a figure prophesied in the Bible to rise to power in the end times, deceiving many and opposing God. Throughout the biblical prophecy, a figure was foretold one who would rise in power and deception leading many astray. The term antichrist stems from the Greek word antichristos, where anti means against or in place of, and Christos means Christ. In essence, the antichrist denotes someone or something that opposes or acts in place of Christ. This concept is rooted in the Bible, particularly in the epistles of John. The term Antichrist is explicitly found in the books of 1 John and 2 John. This man of lawlessness is described as one who opposes God, sets himself up in God's temple, and claims to be God. Such characteristics align with the broader concept of an Antichrist figure, one who opposes and seeks to replace Christ. We read, Come, and see. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 6 through 7. 
and you know what restrains him now from being revealed. It is so that he will be revealed at his own appointed time. For the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority and the coming reign of lawlessness is already at work. But it is restrained only until he who now restrains it is taken out of the way. According to biblical prophecy, the first seal that is open in the book of Revelation signifies the rise to power of a dictator who would play a significant role in shaping the events of the end times. It is believed that this dictator would emerge as a charismatic leader who would inspire a large following and wield considerable influence over world affairs. While the identity of this dictator is a subject of much speculation and debate, many believe that he would be a ruthless and cunning leader who would use his power to achieve his own goals and agenda. Some also suggest that he would be able to perform miracles and deceive many people with his false promises and claims. There has been a lot of speculation and debate among biblical scholars and theologians regarding the connection between the four horsemen of Revelation chapter 6 and the 70th week of Daniel. Some argue that these horsemen represent the course of history leading up to these events, while others believe that they are specifically tied to Daniel's 70th week and the tribulation that follows. The Second Horseman The second horseman of the apocalypse is a symbolic figure. This horseman represents war and conflict. When the Lamb, representing Jesus, opens the second of the seven seals, the second horseman appears, but this time he rides a red horse. The color red is often associated with blood and violence, which fits the theme of war that this horseman symbolizes. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Revelation chapter 6 verse 4 We read, Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. This rider did not need to bring war and destruction. All he needed to do was take peace from the earth. Once this peace, God's gift to man was taken, men quickly rushed in with war and destruction. Peace between men and among nations is a gift from God. It is not the natural state of relations between men. The concept of peace, whether it be between individuals or among nations, has long been considered a precious gift. It is not something that comes naturally to human beings. Rather, it is something that must be actively pursued and maintained through conscientious effort and dedication. We read, And it was granted. This authority was granted to the horsemen. This is directly or indirectly the judgment of God. We then see that people should kill one another. The present times are characterized by a significant amount of war and conflict. In the aftermath of World War II, the world has witnessed more than 150 wars of various types, ranging from major international conflicts to small-scale domestic disputes. Sadly, each year these armed conflicts take the lives of thousands of people across the globe, leading to a tremendous loss of human life. In addition, the economic cost of these wars is staggering. This verse highlights the horseman's role in causing war and taking away peace from the world. The great sword held by the horseman is a symbol of warfare and the destructive power of conflict. The second horseman's arrival signifies a time of widespread war and bloodshed. The appearance of the second horseman riding a red horse and holding a great sword 
is a symbol of increasing warfare and violence in the world. This is significant in end-time prophecy, as it represents a period where peace is taken away from the earth. The emergence of the second horseman follows the first horseman, who represents conquest or pestilence. This sequence suggests a progression of events leading to the end times. The escalation from the first to the second horseman shows a worsening of global conditions, moving from conquest to widespread war. The wars and conflicts symbolized by the second horseman also serve as a reminder of the consequences of human sin and the need for redemption. The turmoil and commotion represented by this horseman emphasize the need for humanity to turn towards God. The Color of the Horse Another Horse That Was Red This symbol cannot be mistaken. Its presence is often associated with chaos, violence, and bloodshed. This conclusion is not only drawn from the nature of the emblem itself, but also from the description that follows it, which leaves no room for ambiguity. Based on the given information, it can be inferred that the state of affairs preceding the current situation was one of peace and calmness. However, this tranquility has now been disrupted by an external factor leading to chaos, violence, and loss of life. The sword has long been considered a symbol of warfare, brutality, and dominance, as stated in Romans chapter 13, verse 4. In this context, it is being used to represent the idea that the particular era being referenced will be marked by widespread bloodshed and violence. Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. But you shall live by your sword and serve your brother. However, it shall come to pass when you break loose from your anger and hatred that you will tear his yoke off your neck and you will be free of him. It is not said by whom the sword was presented, but the fact is merely referred to that the rider was presented with a sword as a symbol of what would occur. The origin of the sword presented to the rider is not explicitly mentioned. However, the text alludes to the fact that the rider was presented with a sword as a symbol of what was to come. The circumstances leading up to the presentation of the sword remain unknown, but it is implied that the gesture had great significance and was intended to convey a message of some sort. The Third Horseman In the biblical book of Revelation, the third horseman of the apocalypse is a symbolic representation of famine, scarcity, and hunger. This ominous figure appears when the third of the seven seals is opened by the Lamb, signaling a time of great tribulation and devastation. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse, its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. Revelation chapter six, verses five through six. The horse that the third horseman rides is black which is a color that has long been associated with death, mourning, and famine in historical literature. The horseman is often depicted holding a pair of scales or balances in his hand, which is a powerful symbol used to represent the measuring and rationing of food during times of scarcity. This suggests that during a famine, resources are scarce and people must be careful and measured in how they use what little food they have. The scales also symbolize the idea that during times of scarcity, there is often an unequal distribution of resources, with some people having more than others. Overall, 
The third horseman of the apocalypse is a powerful and chilling symbol of the devastating effects of famine and scarcity. The mention of wheat, barley, oil, and wine and their prices suggests extreme scarcity and the resulting high cost of food. This indicates a time when basic necessities will become incredibly expensive and hard to obtain. The third horseman, therefore, represents a period of severe hunger and scarcity on Earth. This figure is part of the broader narrative of the four horsemen, each symbolizing different aspects of the apocalyptic prophecy. The famine indicated by the third horseman is a part of a series of events that lead to widespread suffering. Famine often brings hunger, malnutrition and increased mortality, severely impacting human life. In this context, the third horseman is a critical component of the divine plan, signifying a period of testing and judgment, where the scarcity of essentials like food challenges humanity and alters the course of societies. His emergence sets the stage for the fourth horseman, who represents death. This sequence implies that the famine will contribute to further death and destruction as part of the unfolding apocalyptic events. The Fourth Horseman In Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 through 8, when the Lamb opens the fourth seal of a scroll with seven seals, the fourth horseman appears. The passage says, Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 through 8, When he, the Lamb, broke open the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, Come. So I looked and behold, an ashen pale greenish gray horse, like a corpse, representing death and pestilence, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades, the realm of the dead, was following with him. They were given authority and power over a fourth part of the earth, to kill with a sword, and with famine and with plague, pestilence, disease, and by the wild beasts of the earth. The horse is described as pale, which is often interpreted as a sickly green or pale yellow, colors traditionally associated with illness and death. With these, the rider of this horse is explicitly named death. This direct naming makes the symbolism clear. This horseman represents the concept of death. Hades, in this context, represents the realm of the dead. The mention of Hades following death implies that wherever death goes, the dead follow. The passage goes on to say, they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague and by the wild beasts of the earth. This indicates that the fourth horseman has the authority to bring death through various means, like war, hunger, disease, and wild animals. His arrival is seen as a peak of the events brought about by the first three horsemen, conquest, war, conflict, and famine. This progression, from war to famine and finally to death, symbolizes a natural escalation of events leading to the end times. Death is the ultimate consequence of the calamities represented by the first three horsemen. War and conflict, second horsemen, and famine, third horsemen, often lead to widespread death, which the fourth horseman symbolizes. This marks a turning point in the narrative leading to more dramatic revelations and occurrences, as described in the later chapters of the Book of Revelation. Judgment is a key theme in the Book of Revelation, where the breaking of each seal and the release of each horseman reveals different aspects of God's plan for the final days. A pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. The fourth and final horseman of the Apocalypse is often interpreted as representing death. This ominous figure serves as a chilling reminder of the devastating consequences of the previous three horsemen, who brought conquest, 
war, and famine. We read, Power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill. Despite the chaos and turmoil that may ensue on earth, it is emphasized that God is always in control. The notion is reinforced by the statement that he still holds the scroll and is the one who opens the seals. This implies that God is aware of all events that take place on earth and has the power to intervene whenever necessary. Therefore, the text conveys a sense of reassurance that even in the face of adversity, God's power remains supreme. The Significance of Four in the Bible The number four holds a significant meaning in the biblical book of Revelation. It is associated with the four living creatures that surround God's throne and the fourfold division of humanity that represents all of creation. Additionally, the earth is often depicted as having four corners, symbolizing the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. Likewise, New Jerusalem representing the new earth has four sides. Revelation chapter 21 verse 16 The city is laid out as a square, its length being the same as its width and he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadia, about 1,400 miles. Its length and width and height are equal. Interestingly, the Hebrew word for seasons, of which there are four, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, is moed. This word, when translated into English, means appointed times. The biblical books of Ruth, Jonah, Malachi, Philippians, Colossians, and 2 Timothy, each number four chapters. Psalm chapter 123 is the only chapter that contains four verses. The four main types of sacrifices made to God in the Old Testament were burnt, sin, trespass, and peace offerings. There are four gospel accounts of Jesus' life and ministry. Each of these emphasizes a unique aspect of his sacrifice and ministry. What happens after the four horsemen? After the appearance of the four horsemen in the book of Revelation, a series of events unfold, continuing the narrative of the end times, which are as follows. Fifth Seal Martyrs when the fifth seal is opened, John sees the souls of those who had been martyred for their faith in God. Martyrs are people who are killed or suffer greatly for their religious beliefs. They are often admired or respected for their courage and commitment to their faith, even in the face of death or extreme hardship. The term is commonly used in the context of someone dying because they refuse to renounce their beliefs in God. During this period, they are under an altar and they cry out for justice. They are given white robes and told to rest a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants and brothers are killed, just as they had been. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 through 11. Sixth Seal Disasters The opening of the sixth seal triggers great natural disasters. A great earthquake, the sun turning black, the moon becoming blood, stars falling to the earth, and the sky receding like a scroll. People from all walks of life hiding in caves and among rocks, trying to escape these terrifying events. Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 17. Sealing of God's Servants Before the seventh seal is opened, there is a pause in the vision. An angel marks the servants of God on their foreheads for their protection. This number includes 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel, symbolizing a group of God's protected and faithful people. Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 8. John also sees a vast multitude from every nation, 
tribe, people, and language standing before God's throne in white robes, praising God. They have come out of the great tribulation and are promised God's eternal protection and comfort. Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 17. Seventh Seal Silence in Heaven When the seventh seal is opened, there is silence in heaven for about half an hour. This moment of silence leads to judgments. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. Trumpet judgments begin. Following the seventh seal, seven angels are given seven trumpets. The blowing of these trumpets signals the start of more judgments, each bringing different plagues or disasters upon the earth. God's Sovereignty Over History This passage underlines the recognition that God is sovereign over history. Terrible things may happen that seem beyond explanation, but on a larger scale, God is using such forces to bring history to its climax. The judgments threatened by the four horsemen are judgments that Jesus said would characterize the present age. Mark chapter 13 verses 7 through 8 When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed, frightened, troubled. These things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines. These things are the beginning of the birth pangs, the intolerable anguish and suffering. The list of four plagues resembles some from the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 2 And it shall be that when they say to you, Where should we go? Then tell them, Thus says the Lord, Those destined for death to death, those for the sword to the sword, those for famine to famine, those for captivity to captivity. The four riders appear to be agents of judgment, though their identity should not be pressed too much, given their symbolic literary function. They most directly recall Zechariah chapter 1 verse 8 where many riders on four different colors of horses represent the Lord's patrol that reports back to him about quiet on the earth. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 8 In the night I saw a vision, and behold, a man was riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees that were in the ravine, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, reddish brown and white. In the book of Zechariah, there is a passage that describes God sending out four chariots patrolling the earth. These chariots are each drawn by horses of a different color, and they are said to be more impressive than any Persian patrols. In this passage, God assigns some of his angels a more active role in carrying out this mission. These four figures stand for actual events that will happen. The book of Revelation contains a recurring theme of judgment and redemption. These events highlight the ultimate triumph of good over evil and the establishment of God's kingdom. The book of Revelation depicts a grand narrative where the forces of good and evil are engaged in a cosmic battle and the ultimate victory of good is a certainty. The events that unfold in the book of Revelation are symbolic and apocalyptic in nature, and they serve to reveal the nature of God's plan for humanity. The book is a call to repentance and a reminder that the ultimate destiny of humanity is in God's hands. During the chaos, it's natural to wonder how humanity reacted. Ideally, one would hope for repentance or an acknowledgement of the divine hand at work. However, even as massive hailstones fell from the sky, 
the human spirit remained stubborn. Instead of seeking forgiveness or understanding, the people cursed God. Revelation chapter 16, verse 21. And giant hailstones, as heavy as a talent, fell from the sky on the people. And people reviled and spoke abusively of God for the plague of the hail, because the plague was so very great. Their hearts, hardened by years of rebellion, couldn't grasp the magnitude of their error. Thus, the seventh bowl wasn't merely a demonstration of God's power, but a clear indication of human frailty and the consequences of persistent defiance. The story serves as a somber reminder that while God is patient and merciful, there comes a time when justice must prevail. The book of Revelation talks about the world's ending and God's final plan. With each bowl poured out, the urgency and gravity of God's judgment become clearer. The purpose of the described events is not to cause fear, but rather to emphasize the significant consequences of a society that rejects its creator. The story features God's wrath. The judgments serve as a profound testament to God's righteous indignation against the wickedness and rebellion of humanity. It's crucial to understand why these events are significant. According to the Bible, they're like puzzle pieces that fit into a larger picture. These occurrences are part of God's grand plan, which serves as a reminder that God is in control of everything. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the midst of the trials and tribulations that we read about in the book of Revelation, especially those symbolized by the four horsemen, conquest, war, famine, and death, we turn to you for comfort and guidance. Lord, in times of uncertainty and fear, remind us of your unending love and protection. Help us to hold on to faith, even when the world around us seems overwhelmed by challenges and suffering. Give us the strength to face each day with courage and the wisdom to understand the complexities of your word. We pray for those who suffer from conflicts and wars, for those who face daily struggles with scarcity and hunger, and for all who are touched by illness and loss. May your presence bring them peace and hope. Guide our actions so that we may be instruments of your peace and love in a world that often feels broken. As we reflect on the messages of the four horsemen, inspire us to live with compassion and kindness, making a positive difference in the lives of those around us. Help us cherish each day as a gift and use it to show your love to others. Please guide us with your kindness to a future where our belief is stronger than our fear, where our love is more powerful than our sadness, and where your goodness takes away all the darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.